today in Adobe Photoshop CS6 we're going to create a vector using the pen tool and um, we're gonna just make like a vector of this Detroit Red Wings hat I'm gonna show you step by step how to do it um, we'll only be using the pen tool and we're going to set it to shape instead of path all right now you want to get a good trace of all the base layers first and you can even zoom in if you like the pencil is kind of tricky to use but once you get used to it it's simple you just click and kind of when you hold the button down you can maneuver the path as much as you like and also once you uh, use the direct path tool by either clicking it here or using the A key you can like and curve each individual point so for those two reasons alone I prefer to use the pen tool over any other tool when it comes to uh, cropping out photos or just tracing over stuff because you can just get really really detailed with the curves and paths and stuff so what you really want to do like I said is just kind of go around the base of all the major shapes and this um, this is what I do when I'm doing any vector I you know I start first with the base layers just to get an idea of how the shape is supposed to be and from there you add in the details on top of it and it doesn't have to be completely 100% accurate but pretty close to you know the general outline and then the dope thing about this is like once you've made your path you can edit it to be whatever type of colors or you can even edit the shape of it even after you've already made the path you can save it and use the same exact shape later so there's a few good things that come out of tracing these with the pen tool so once you get your uh, path your first shape going you see right here I'm just gonna take this eye off so it's not like bothering us but uh, actually just so we stay color coordinated I want to take this eyedropper tool I'm gonna to click here on the uh, hat bring this back up and now I want to make this uh, purple and all I did was hit Apple backspace to uh, change the color of the background the purple has to be set to the background so we're gonna hide this again so we can finish tracing up some more pieces uh, I'm gonna do the rim of the hat now the brim of the hat I should say I'm sorry and the brim is black so we'll stick to that black color we actually might even use like gray a very very dark gray and then go from there um, like I said it doesn't have to be completely accurate like a hundred percent sometimes if you can't see what you're doing you can just like lower the opacity like that so you can see the outlines a little better and then there's my brim shape make that black like I said I do okay so now you can already see that we have like our basic shape for the hat there it goes under. Oops. That's the wrong shortcut key. There we go. Alright, yeah, that layer goes underneath. Alright, so now we want to start filling in the other details, such as the shape of the logo on the hat. And you know, um, this technique is good for making images that can be blown up to whatever size you'd like them to be. So, I mean, once I'm done with this, I can enlarge it 
to be the size of a billboard and I can shrink it down to the size of a, a penny and it'll still keep the same crispy quality and the sharpness from the layers because it's all shapes and like vector based stuff so we're gonna put this uh, on top we gotta make sure your layers stay in the proper order so everything shows up properly now we just want to go I want to go over it again and, and do the white portion set this fill to white and then we don't want any any of that okay now we're gonna uh, actually we'll do it like this now we'll trace over this try to get a good bring the opacity down so I can see what I'm doing And while this can be like the most tedious type of design you can ever make in Photoshop, probably they come out really, really nice. And you can like pretty much do any type of portrait painting or any type of design with just this pen tool. So it's, it's pretty amazing. It's one of my favorite tools to use in Photoshop just for cropping or uh, like drawing with. All right, so got our little base layers going here uh, this one's white the one beneath it should be black all right we'll make this invisible for now so we can see what we're doing all right now you see, as you can see this white has like a bunch of uh, the logo has a bunch of black spots that show through the white so excuse me we're gonna Go here. And then we're going to subtract front shape. And then we're just going to go back over it like this. And it will like pull out those black spots for us. Just that way so we don't have to make a black layer on top of it and have all these different confusing layers going on so that's how you take care of that you just want to keep doing it now this is what you do whenever you want to subtract from a shape that you've made to have underlying layers shine through It's coming to life. There we go. And mine isn't going to be 100% perfect. I'm just doing this for the sake of uh, educational purposes. Okay. All right, so got the logo chipped in there for the most part. We're going to add in these little smaller details like uh, these triangles here. And you can see where the where it becomes tedious.
Okay, looking pretty good, right? Just a few more spots to fill in right here. Then we'll move on to the next layer. And then if you want to like go back and perfect it, you can with the direct path selection tool. You can select the points and maneuver them to be how you want them to be. We'll pull this back up to 100 so you can see that the white is definitely as strong as it should be. Zoom out and you can see it's starting to come to life more and more as we add more and more layers to it. Alright, so now I'm going to add in the uh, the blue which is right there we're going to take the pen tool again but this time we'll, we'll make sure it's on new layer and then just start clicking away whoops can't see what I'm doing Okay, I got one of them, but now let's say that I don't want a million different layers of all these little portions of the wing, like the blue, all these different blues. I want them all on one layer, right? So we'll just do combine shapes. And now when I make a new shape, it's still on the same path, or I'm sorry, it's still on the same layer as the previous shape. And it just keeps going until I tell it to stop. So you don't have to have a million different layers to search through. When you do vectors, you definitely end up with like a million layers at the ending. So this helps to make things less confusing. I'm not the type to label my layers. so. The less that I have to eyeball, the better. And then now we have our little feathers in detail. Um, they're supposed to be light blue, so we'll double click on it. Pow. Let's 
so we got our shapes going people can tell what it is it's starting to be a little bit better let's add this uh little blue thing at the top I don't even know what this part of the hat's called I'm sorry Here we go wait a second Let's try it again. There we go. Don't know what just happened there, but we're good now. Probably a little Photoshop glitch. All right now, we got a nice, decent shape for a hat, like a 2D thing going on. But let's add some dimension to it. Now, you see how the hat has all these different. stitches and lines going through it we want that now we want it to be similar to how it is on the hat so Now, when it comes to our shading, everything has to be black. When it comes to our highlights, everything has to be white. In the end, we lower the opacity to give us our shadow, or color, whatever we're looking for. It doesn't look black anymore. Now it looks, you know, purple. So, yeah, we'll do that. Actually, let's try this. We're gonna put this on the dotted line, stroke maybe uh, let's say one pixel. One pixel is fine for now. Zero fail. Yep, we'll keep the stroke black. All right, so now we're making a new layer, similar to the last one. Now we're getting that dotted line thing going.
Oops, made a mistake. Perfect time to show you guys how to fix it though. Alright. Let's say you place a path in the wrong spot. Just grab this and pull it over with the direct selection tool. Bam, fixed. Simple. So I know my stitching isn't perfect, but you guys are getting the idea of how it goes down with the hat. It has a uh, some circles on it, so we're going to take the the lips tool. Make sure the fill is white cuz that's the color we're using and then just do those like this if it doesn't fit you can always transform it kind of like that okay so we got those going Alright, now we gotta add in our shadows, which is pretty simple. You just kind of follow, see where the shadows are going, what's going on with those, and follow them. Like so. And then when you bring this up, just turn the opacity down super low. The higher the opacity, the more prominent the shadow. You want to go ahead and do this for all of your shadows that you get. Sorry, putting more perspective to the hat and some at some points because of the way the light shines it creates highlights as well so when there's a highlight you just simply apply the same principles but with white instead of with black like a little tiny highlight right there or something pretty dope right let me see I'm 
Now I can see what I'm missing. I don't think I'm going to add the new era logo, but I'll put one of these stickers on here. The sticker was red, so. Dark red, though. Especially white with red, so we'll do this duplicated it. Now I'm going to take the rectangle tool and subtract the white off of here so that it has like that little cool split thing. I also want to uh, add another white ellipse over top of this. We're going to take the subtraction and pull away from the white shape there a little bit and then drop the opacity so we can have that reflective look. Now, I just want to get a little bit fancier with the gradients. Oops. And I think I'd actually prefer it to be gold rather than red. So there, I mean, there's my hat, you know. Um, see a little white shining through there, so I'm gonna do that. There we go. Now, I just want to do a couple more things to it. One, I want to create these dotted lines that are here. Probably can just duplicate this, shrink it. Will that work? Can we really take the shortcut that way? We'll see. Yes, pull these anchors out. I just cheated and took a shortcut by duplicating the first one I made and now I'm just editing it to kind of fit the pattern a little bit more. And 
to save a little time. If it was client work, I'd be a little more delicate with it. Now, this brings me to my original reasoning for suggesting to make this a dark, dark gray. So you can pick up on the other things. Now, we're going to stop here. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below about uh, you know detailing and shading. Actually, I want to do a couple more things. Just want to add. more of these shadow joints over here. And then we're done. One thing I don't like about this, these aren't Red Wings colors, so I'm going to go ahead and change all that up really quick. And then after that, I'm pretty much done with it. See, that's a dope thing. You can customize it to be however you like. I think I'm going to stick to that. And then this could be white. Or maybe black. Yeah, black looks great. And then you can even, like, you know, just customize it to however you see what fit Now you can also, if you want to like add some quote unquote detail, you can play with the uh, the layer styles. A few things I like to do to my uh, vectors is like mess with the gradient inside it. I'll set the gradient up and then just set it to overlay or some to kind of get some shading going on.
just some things that like add depth to your design, you know what I mean? Let's try this one. Yeah, I like that. Let's move it. Usually it lets you move it around. It's weird, it's not working, but you know, just a few things that like add some depth to it. I think that really makes it pop out a little bit more. Oh, you can also like uh do like pattern overlays that sort of resemble threading, such as that. Oh, almost forgot about these. Okay. These are supposed to have like, you know, little tiny breathe air holes in them. So we'll go back to what we learned earlier with subtracting the shape and just put a little bit of a little bitty hole there. But that ends up looking weird. So we can actually do this, make a new layer, fill it with black. keep going and keep getting more and more detail and it'll start to look more and more realistic And there you have it. There's your Red Wings hat. Um, Could have gotten a little more detail by like, you know, maybe adding to the New Era sticker or even adding the New Era logo. But I just wanted you guys to get the gist of how it works. Um, if you got any questions, as I said before, you can leave them in the comments below. If you got any comments, you can also leave those in the comments below on how to make uh you know these gradients better or if you have any tips you want to share I'd be happy to hear them because I'm not the greatest at this so uh, yeah uh, one thing I almost forgot to mention when you're saving okay 
Now you want to save it so that first of all you'd want to delete all of your hidden layers. This is just extra weight. Now you want to save it as to where you can be able to use it transparent on anything. And you'll be able to re you know make it whatever size you want. So you'd go to file, save as, um, Photoshop EPS. And when you save it, all these options come up depending on what you're using it for. You will select set options. Um, it's going to be like a TIFF file. It's going to be nice, really big, and crisp for you. It might take a minute to save. I don't know, depending on how fast or slow your computer is. Bam. Now, when I save it, uh, where did I save it to? Saved it to okay my t-shirt folder. Alright, now when I save it. And try to open it in Photoshop. It's going to ask me, or it should ask me, how big do I want the file to be? See? It's asking, or it's telling you what it was saved as, but we want it to be 300 resolution. Let's say we're using it for print. You see how much bigger the file has gotten? The, the larger you make the resolution, the bigger the file gets. So, hit OK. Now I was making a raster image of this file. Our vectors are going to be saved in PSD format. So be sure to, uh, when you finish your project, also save it as a PSD as well as an EPS. Just in case you want to, you know, edit it later on. Now. I'm making a pretty big ass file right now, so it's probably gonna take a minute. So the song goes, wow. Oh, it just it just does it again like do 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 Oh man, I think I'll fast forward through this part when I edit the video. Okay, so now we get a rasterized layer. I'm going to put it at the same percentage so as you guys can see the detail. Zoomed all the way in and still kept the sharpness at 100%. Still looks good. As opposed to, you know, other images that you blow up to four times the size that get even a little bit fuzzy. This one still stays sharp. The only thing, in fact, that gets slightly fuzzy is the, uh, the pattern because it's not a raster. Or because it is a raster. But the shapes keep their same sharpness that'll be it um, oh and if you guys want to download this PSD file 
it will be available on um, www.photoshopdiamonds.com um, fully layered so you can you know kind of move around with it dissect it to however you like to make it okay